Hello friends. Welcome to my channel. I'm Bernard. We're working on the Haydn Violin Concerto number two in G major and we're in part two of this series of this teaching. We're going to be starting here at measure 53. Okay we've just finished that first section, a very beautiful first section with many many contrasts of dynamics. This next section 53 starts piano We don't need a lot of we don't need a lot of dynamic contrast because it's it's a new a new thing that Haydn's brought in, and it's very interesting just the way it is. We don't have to do a lot more. I, I, one technical note here: <clears throat> we're starting in third, third position. Move to second position, and of course with the dot, we're preserving that phrasing, and then get this over here. We're still staying in second position, and then back to first. And then do an extra bow at the end. So you can be expressive with that last F sharp. Okay, so as I did in the first section, at this point I will again go up and slur. It's kind of espressivo. Now I'm not making the crescendo through this bar. Keep it expressive, lots of vibrato on the longer notes, and then the crescendo will come in the next bar. In my music, they have the, the height of the phrase in the middle of bar 56. I really feel it going all the way to 57. So the crescendo bar would be through 56 going into 57. I'll play it again. There it is, the forte right there. And then one beat, actually over two beats, diminuendo, right? There's Haydn playing a little joke on us. You know, we think we're getting into this lots of 16 triplets, and all of a sudden we go back into a duple. Now this is this is my idea. I, I like this idea where instead of playing, which is marked in the music like this with a slur on the two sixteenths, I do a little staccato on that. Much much more interesting, you know. It's like Isaac Cern says: "There's no right wrong. Just say something." And so I'm saying something, I'm making a contrast from the triplets. Crescendo. And I separate those, those last the triplets, uh, sixteenths. So I end up up bow in bar 59. So I want it up bow, up down, up, very net. Whenever you can make phrasing natural with your bowing, it, it's good for you, it's good for the audience. Then back the first. Nice phrasing. And now I've got this forte. And it's a contrast. It's a nice way we because this is going to happen four four phrases in a row I guess four bars in a row. And then on my part we have, we've got a page turn and then we do the same type of phrasing. Piano. This very, very natural there will make the crescendo at the end of the bar.
here I have a, I have a diminuendo in my part. I don't know why. Why would I want to you know telegraph that the piano is coming? Keep it forte and let's have a subito piano. At the end of this bar, it's okay. Let, let's do it. We'll give in the crescendo. But it's kind of nice to lead into the crescendo on this. I mean, just spontaneously, I haven't performed like this. But it strikes me we could do a forte piano. Forte. Piano. Forte. Piano. And then, see, that's a nice thing that can spontaneously come to, to, come to you, you know? That's a nice one. I, <laughs> next time I play it, maybe I'll play it like that. And then, so it'll be forte here. And then we have a little diminuendo for es molto, molto espressivo. I'll never forget, I love telling stories from my experience. One time I was sitting in the orchestra and we were playing some very romantic piece and and Maestro Zal was talking about it, but his English wasn't really, really great. And he was trying to explain something and, you know, more emotion, something. And one of the players was a wonderful, wonderful uh, Spanish, Spanish violinist uh, from South America. And Enrique yells out, Maestro, molto appassionata. And <laughs> so I was like that and he goes, yeah. <laughs> what I was asking for. Molto appassionata. So this is a molto appassionata moment. We're playing. One more time. You know, I mean, this is molto appassionata for Haydn. It's not molto appassionata for a romantic composer. <laughs> I'll play it one more time. So this is forte. I wonder, I'm just thinking to myself, what would happen if we somehow could, is it possible? You know, if I could get an up bow on here. It might be it might be really exciting. What would happen if I did is it See that's very nice. Where's my pencil? I think I'll mark that in the music. I hadn't thought of that, you know. This is what's wonderful about classical music. You can be playing away and all of a sudden there's a, there's an inspiration that comes. See, and you mark it in the music. Try it and then, you know, come back to it tomorrow. See if you still like it, you know. So here we go. Now, of course, since I changed the bowing, I made bowing backwards, I'm going to have to compensate for that at some point. And I'm thinking, well, maybe right here in bar 72. Let's see. Up, up down, up, down, up, down, up. We've got those, uh, wait a minute, I didn't do that well. Okay, so starting the bar of 72 down bow, then I could do a down bow on the end. So that, let me play the whole phrase one more time, see if it works. Nice. Now up. This is all off. Like the first time off. And I recommend this trill on the A string if you get. 
And then that fits nicely after the harmonic. You do the harmonic, you're in fourth position. Kind of very easy to, to find that spot. All right, well, that was, that was fun for me, too, just to make these discoveries as I'm talking to you and explaining to you. So we've got, as you see in this section, lots and lots of dynamic contrasts. It's really, really very exciting. And we've got molto appassionata. Okay, so I'll end, the, I'll end the video here. This will be part two, and we'll go on to part three in the next, in the next lesson.